Behold, he died. And what we can see through his flesh and eyes, I thought, Joe, 
And I'm abiding in him and he's abiding in me. I'm abiding in his word. I thought he says abide in me. He's talking about Jesus himself. He says abide in me. And he refers to us, it refers to him further back as the word. And I thought we can read through his words. We are made clean. So I thought today, if you want to abide in him, we can read every bit of it. We can read every bit of it in his word. In his word. In his word. In the words that he spoke. In the words that they written. Holy Ghost and fire being rich for us to read. I thought through his word. He says in verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is with me. Men gather them up and cast them into fire, and they are burned. I thought of it. I began to think, I read it the other day, and I, and I immediately thought with it on the mind. It talks about being cut off and, and thrown away and with it. And then the bird will kill And uh, how, how I begin to get a bird on my heart. I flipped over there to Galatians 5. I felt like that's what the Lord was leading me to. I began to flip over there and, and I'm reading about the works of the flesh. And, you know, those, I'm not a very good speller or a very good reader. I'm just not. But how I begin to I begin to think, read each one of those works of the flesh, those 17 works. And Kenny, I begin to go through and I begin to read what they was. And I begin to study on them and see what what they were done. And sometimes I've heard them get up and they read them and they just blaze right through them. And you got people sitting there wondering. And Terry, you begin to burden my heart. The more I begin to read what the Lord has been, it begin to burden my heart. Why? Why did it burden your heart? Because I seen them. I seen them right among us. I seen some of them in Hagen. Yes, I seen some of them right, right down the years. And I have to dig them out because I'm his flesh. I'm his flesh if I don't keep that real close to him. And I don't crucify his flesh, Terry. I thought those works of the flesh are nothing but natural. I don't know if I'm out. He preached it years ago. Somebody brought it up. They talk about that white dog and the black dog. And if you feed that black dog more than the white dog, and you put them in a pen and you make them fight, uh, that black dog is going to win every time. I thought that black whichever dog you feed more, every single time it's going to win. Every single time. But I thought it never hurts. It never hurts to step back and look at your brain. Yeah. Yeah. It never hurts. And I thought the Lord sent these messages. Uh, not because he's wanting to go ahead and tell you I'm throwing you in the fire. Yeah. But because you see that branch. Maybe you're beginning to, yeah. maybe you're beginning to just, the fruits have dropped off and there ain't nothing coming back, Jerry. There ain't no fruits coming back. There ain't nothing back. Maybe he sees that and he's wanting to catch you before he, before he has to come in and whack you off. I thought that sounds stern and that sounds harsh, but that's the way I read it. I thought he said that if, he says, and, and the man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is with me. Uh, I don't want to get that. Because the next step of that, Jerry, is hell far. The next step of that is burning for an eternity. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you what you will, it shall be done unto you. I thought, uh, I'm the next place I'm going to Galatians 5. But I thought, I read that verse there in 7, and I began to think about uh, Ask what you will. If you don't think, I've heard so many people misuse that through this life. I've heard them ask, ask things foolishly. And I thought, hell, when I got that word abiding in my heart, Jerry, and I begin to ask God's will, I begin to ask God, what do you need me to do? The will of God. Where do you need me at, Lord? Am I worthy of feeling it, Lord? Let me do what it takes to be worthy of feeling it so I can work. Let me bear those fruits of the Spirit. So when you come and you see, you look at my branch, you say, hey, there's something there. There's something there in me. When the Lord can look at our branch and see the fruit of the Spirit working with us. But I'm sad to say, I, I read those 17 works of the flesh. There are a whole lot more relevant. There are a whole lot more people see. I see them people, a whole lot more relevant in people's lives. And uh, they, they manifest themselves a lot more. They manifest themselves a lot more and talk uh, days ago. Days ago, the Lord had been dealing with this. And how how did you deal with me on that word manifest? And I'd heard it, but you know, that's a big word, I guess. You don't even know what it means. And I looked it up and how it means uh, deeds. By deeds and appearance, it proves what is in a man or a woman or in something. It's manifested, it's shown. And I thought how uh, I was thinking about a garden and I, I preached it a while back at Bledsoe. It was talking. I said, that garden, 
There's one thing that will grow. No problem at all. I don't have to fit. I don't have to, I don't have to work hard to keep them going. It's weeds. It's weeds. I might have told it here. I don't know. But it's weeds. And I thought of uh, every day those weeds are growing. Every time I, I did you turn your back on that garden, I thought I grown up half had his garden there. And how we were doing vacation, we would uh yeah. go to vacation, we was going with Charlie Creek somewhere, and we'd be gone for five or six days. Yeah. And how uh how I remember we get back and I say, oh my, I've got so much work to do. It started all grown up, bro. Yeah. It's all grown up. Look at my corn, it's weighted down, the morning glories is grown up on it, it's yeah. weighted down, I've got so much work to do. But it's just, just a couple days. Yeah. Just a couple yeah. days being gone. Yeah. How they never stop bro. Yeah. You can cut them out, you can go back that next week, and they're still right there. They're still growing. They're still sprouting up. I thought that's just like us. Yeah. I thought I, I leave this up the flesh of man of the and I and I don't sacrifice him. Right. And I don't lay him down and say, I, I don't want nothing new to you. I thought I, I come to find the closer I get to the Lord, the more I hate this flesh of man. Yeah. I look at myself sometimes and I think I hate this outward body. Yeah. I hate yeah. this outward body. Oh, I, I can't wait for the day to get rid of it. I can't yeah. wait to shed it. Yeah. And, and, and go and be with the Lord. I thought that's what we're working towards. Yeah. That's what we're working towards. We forget about that sometimes. Right. We forget about it. But starting verse uh, 19. So now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, barriers, emulations, drafts, strikes, seditions, heresies, Indians, murders, drunkenness, revenues, and such like of which I tell you, I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, if they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because I, 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 there was a couple of them that stuck out to me. I thought I, I, I was a, I was, I, I read the heresy, yeah. and uh, I read I read what it meant, and uh, I tell you what it means. It means uh, in, in the Christian faith, it means denying the very essential elements of the Christian faith. I thought we we were going through a time where people are denying the essential elements of the Christian faith. I thought we were reading this and we're not taking it for what it is. Where we're getting in this book and, and it's and it's come around among us, but we get in this book and I thought that it, people were taking things way out of context and how, how we read it and, and people they interpret it different ways. I get it, but there is a, there comes a line. Yeah. There comes a line drawn in the sand where it's a heresy. It's a heresy doctrine. I thought I, I looked at emulations and how 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 in many times I've seen this. And I had to get rid of it myself. Uh, I sure couldn't preach and had it. Uh, I looked at, the, at my Facebook. And how how you get on there and you see people in yeah. They're posting what they have. Yeah. And it's a drive to show what they've got. You know? yeah. It's a drive to show, hey, this is what I have. This is who I am. Just look at this. Look at this. I, I just got this, I just got this put on. Or I just got this done with my stuff. And I thought people were just right here. That's all it is. I'm just reading you what's in the It is, and how it's worked its way right into the press of holiness and of our people. And how, how and all these sins, and you can read about them, and you can look at them, and I read about all of them, and how they all work together as one. Yeah. And you may say, what do you mean? Yeah. I thought that enemy, he ain't just foolishly yeah. going out and trying to trip us up. He just ain't foolishly going out and trying to lead us into just one little thing. But I thought he has that plan behind him. Behind that shade that you can't see for uh -huh. you lay the in your eyes. Yeah. He has that plan behind that. Yeah, and I thought that plan is this. Yeah. He, he wants to bring everything he can get in your heart. Yeah. I thought if I look at it like this, he may come to you and say, I can't I can't get adultery in God. I just can't get it, I just can't get him to fight for that. But I come on down the line here and I can find something else. Yeah. I can find something else. And I mean, I mean, once we dive into that something else. And only just go at me things. Because I don't have walk working with me no more. I don't have the spirit. I don't have nothing to fight that off with. It says right there, John. It says, if you're fighting on me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. It's out of control. It's out of your hands. You can't control this no more. Why? Because it's not in your hands. I thought the other night that was reading. Uh, I believe Blake was preaching. And 
I looked as he was reading, and I noticed it said, God, all in the Bible, is with a big G. It's a capital G. And I noticed there was a point that said God there and it had a little G. And I read the verse, and it was talking about the God of this world. It was yeah. talking about Satan. Satan. And I thought, what's happening over to the things of this world? I, I looked at Reverend's and, 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 and how uh, many times people ask me, how do you get certain things out of the Bible? And uh, I thought, we've got to study it. And we've got to show a simple proof. We've got to find out what this means. And how I read the, the definition of reverence. And it's going out in this world and taking part in a loud, festive activities. Yeah. That's what it talked about. Loud, boisterous, showing, showing who they are, showing what they can do. Taking great pleasure in the things of this world. I thought that's what it meant. And I began to read that. And I began to look at our lives there. And I began to see how more and more I see us taking part, myself included, in the things of this world. We're, we're going out in them. I know it's a popular message. I love to preach. I tell you, I tell the Lord, too, I love to preach. gives me stuff like this. I say, God, let me. If you're walking on the water, or, or this or that, but I can't. I, I can't. I have to do what it gives me. And I thought, how, how more and more I see these things developing among us. And I thought that fruit of the Spirit and those works of the flesh cannot save. They can't be on the same vine. They can't come out the same fountain. And I'm afraid some of us will blind ourselves. We said that will never be me. Those works of the flesh will never be on my vine. But you can't see. You can't see. The enemy's blinded you to your own business. You're blind to that plane that's behind closed doors. You can't see through that dark shadow that is put in front of your eyes. And hell, it's the mercies of God. I thought. We read about mercy and grace and how good they are, but people has completely misused the word mercy. I thought I read oftentimes in the Old Testament how hard are some of the things that God spoke to the children of Israel and how hard how hard he was on them. But at the same time, right before that, he would have great mercy by warning them and giving them strict warning. And I thought tonight he's wanting to let you know, don't let you branch. Wither up. And I thought if you branch his bird fruit. These fruits of the Spirit, He's going to purge you yeah, to bring more and more. Yeah. I thought how he, He's purged me. I thought I'll, sometimes I'll say this thing. When I'm, when I'm really seeking God, and you think I'm going to come out to the house of God, He's going to preach me like He never has before. He's going, he's going to let us do this or let us do that. Maybe help this one as it needs. But that's what gets in our mind, Kenny and I. And I'm a young man, and that might be foolish to think, but sometimes when I really think, when I think, that when I think that I'm really walking like I ought to, and I really start trying to get close to God, it begins to open up my heart to you. And that's what he does. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't shouting me across the shoulder. But sometimes I find myself and I'm looking down on this flesh. Working on and I'm saying, man, I've got some work to do. Yeah. I got some things to improve. Yeah. I got some places to move on. And I thought, uh, Travis got up a while back and he, he blasted me both barrels and didn't even know it. And how I got done, he got done. And I sat down and said, I, I just did some work with it. But that's what I preach for. Yeah, to show them. Because yeah. I look at my own branch and I know I'm doing it. And without God, and without His great mercies, without His Son, Jesus Christ, my flesh is blood. I thought I wouldn't be worth nothing, Jason. I couldn't do nothing. I thought there's no way. There's no way a 21 year old man like me, a 21 year old, that I could ever walk this path without the mercies of God, without Him working on me, without Him showing me where I where I come up short. Why I say that? I thought there's so many things out there yeah. offering yourself to us, showing yourself to us. That's why I had to. I had to abstain. And I couldn't do it on my own. But it's through that spirit that lives down in me. It's through that honor that I lean on. They're stronger than me. I thought, I read, uh, I, I preached the other day about uh, when the people, he fed 5,000, and I love that story. But it was after. It was after. And uh, Jesus went on on the ship. I think Tiberius or something like that he went to. It was, it was somewhere. And it happened. Uh, but how, uh, how the people, they come back. Where's he at? Where's they at? Where, where, where are they at? And they saw the disciples get the ship and he wasn't with them. And they couldn't find him. And they got word and they figured out some way where Jesus was and they went and they found him. And when they got there, he knew why they came. He said, it ain't, it ain't for the bread. You know, it ain't for, but it's for that that you got. That that you got that bread of life in their heart that was living in them. And they encountered something that day, Kenny, that could carry them when they couldn't carry themselves. I thought I preached about those 5,000. I thought there were so many people in that crowd. And this one had different troubles than that one. And that one had a different life than this one. And maybe that one's mistake wasn't the same as that one. But they all come to the same remedy. 
out and when I do this, I will go out and he said, I, I want to go out and for the Lord. And that's a wonderful call. And that's a wonderful double. But I looked at him and I said, you cannot do it on your own. I said, you, you know, because he was talking like he could prepare himself before he ever walked through those doors to do what's right. And I said, you can't. Yeah. I said, that's a wonderful art to have. Get in that order and pray and get the Lord working in your life and keep that heart. Yeah. And it'll come true. It'll manifest. It'll manifest in your life if you keep that heart towards God. Yeah. How I told him, I said, you can't do this on your own. No. You cannot. You can't I thought you, you fully depend on His name and His Word. So He has spoken to us. I thought when preachers get up and preach, that's His words that He's spoken to those men. How they get up and they tell us how to live. And I have to sometimes listen. Even when places say, no, just, just put that aside. That ain't what you want to hear, but I know it's what's good for you. I know it's what's good for you. Tell them the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, all suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. I thought it says that in verse 16 on back of verse, we walk in the Spirit. We're not subject to the law. Or death to the lust of the And uh, I thought how I read that. And I began to think about that. And then uh, how when we do walk in, in the spirit, we have the same most things in the I thought how there is no law in us. Yep. If, if there is no law that can abide to us, that can bless us. That can, because there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong in those things. And the fruit of the Spirit. There is no law against us. You can't find no wrong. Yeah. You can't find no law against that those things. Is. But I thought when we walk in the flesh, I'm condemned. I'm condemned. And I thought that sin, that sin, that curse of sin, that way back when, when the world was first created and started, I start battering that burden. I do. I start wearing it at home. Right. And when I have those works of the flesh working in me, I'm almost done. But those works of the flesh working in me, I have that on me. And I have that burden I cannot bear. I have that burden that I can't do nothing about. And it says, They that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and love. We live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. I thought I, I'd tell you a quick way to check your life. Check your life and see if you are bearing the fruit of the Spirit. But I promise you, the flesh don't work yet. No. It don't work yet. I can look at it. I have to look at humble ourselves. Humble ourselves down. I've had too many times. And I've had to look at my own mind. Yeah. That ain't something I like to do. I thought, uh, they tell me all the time, I say, Dad was a, a very hard nosed man, stubborn. And I find that sometimes, I, I find that in my own self. I find that stubbornness. And I don't want to say, hey, you're right. I don't want to say I'm wrong. Right. And I want to jump around every way around and say I was wrong. Yeah. And I want to look for every little hole there is. But I promise you on that day when the branches that is cut off and they're withered, right. they come before us and he's talking about being human. I thought wherever we lie on that day, yeah. I thought there was no loopholes. Oh. Every loophole would be closed. I thought if I'm having to make loopholes on this earth, Jason, I'd have to come up before the Lord. I have to try to find a loophole. I'd like to have these things that there is no law. There is no law against them. No, you can't find no wrong in me. I like to have those things working in me. I like to have that spirit working in my mind. That I can walk according to his work. His spirit then, then, I thought when I truly get this thing right, and I truly get it moving on me the way it ought to be, and I have those fruits of the spirit working on me, then they're manifest. Right, right. And I can come out and I can work yeah. for the Lord. And be a servant for the Lord. And do whatever he bends my heart to do. Until then. I gotta get through that first step. I thought we're born again. That's the first step. And I thought we have to have those fruits of the Spirit working with us. We have to have those. We have to be sanctified in the eyes of our Savior. I thought He died on that tree for us for a reason. Not just to come here and pray and go on our merry way and do what we will. Live how we will to come in and shout and fill the Lord. I thought this not you're not filling the Lord. You're filling one or two things. Flesh or devil. That's the best way I can explain it. There's one or two things you're building. Because if I can't line my life up with this king, it won't line up with me. I'll be it. If this flesh of him, I'll be it. I'll be it. I'll be it. I'll be it. It's a sin question of the day. Because I'm nothing. Well, that cross, I can do nothing. But I promise, it's never right here, it's never been. It's never shook. Its foundations is never been shaken. And it won't. And it won't on the day of the I thought 
Those words right. that, that, that were sanctified, made clean through. That's what it said. It said we're made clean through the Word. I thought those words is what I have to apply in my everyday life. Right. And I thought sometimes I don't like it, but I still have to eat. And I find when I truly am applying those words, I pray for His will. I pray for His will in my life. I thought uh, when the Lord dealt with us to, to, to preach, uh, I said, Lord, and when He called me, I said, you know what? Uh, my brother's a preacher. I I don't I love him. I look up to him. That ain't what I want to do. I said, that ain't at all what I want to do, Jerry. I said, I just uh, people people and you know they I'm a young man, maybe when I'm 40 or 50 year old. Maybe then. Maybe then, Lord. I said, I'd like to prophesy. I'd like to, I'd like to prophesy to you people. That wasn't what he was requiring to me at that time. And I had to I had to get broke down. And I had to find out that it ain't about what I want. And it's about that end goal I thought of. That expected end that we're looking for. That expected end. That's our expected end if we walk according to the Word of God. But I thought, hell, I had, I had to break myself down. And say, hey, I guess that ain't his will right now. And how, I, how I began to preach. And, and I tell you, I struggle more times than I ever feel like I get the victory. I thought uh, the other day the Lord helped me. And I kind of felt like I got the victory. And somebody said, that's good, ain't it? I said, yeah, but... And I shouldn't have said it. I said, next time will probably be harder. And uh, I can't lie to you, I ain't got the victory like I did the last time I preached. That's but it's because, it, it's because it's how it is. That's, that, that's that work that we got to do. That's just what I got to do, Kenny. I can't lie about it. But how I begin to, I begin to do His will first. And after that desire, since I was a young man to prophesy, uh, how one day it was so... The Lord dealt with me to do that. Yeah. He dealt with me that you can use me in that way. Yeah. But I had to first become willing right. to His will. Right. I had to first say, this is what the Lord wants of me. This is what I'll have to do. Even though I don't like it, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Sometimes I get up and I stumble all the way so through good. my message. And I close that Bible and I get down to pray and I don't even got the words to say in my mind. It's so, so racing. But I said, this is what i got to do. This is the will of God in my life. And I thought if I learned to live by that message, because I found it working for me. I found it working for me. When I went out, everything, not just preaching, not just start calling, everything. When I learned to be fully submissive to His will, listen to every word He tells me, then and there I find my true peace in God. I thought Demas talked about that peace the other day at Bledsoe. So and uh, he began to talk about... Uh, he, he said, if, if we really get it working with us, we wouldn't be able to go out and, and kill a deer or something like that. He said, how, how I, I long for that peace in my life. I'd love to pray for more peace of that, of that in my life. And I find my greatest peace is when I'm living in that Word. And when I'm walking in the Word of the Lord. And I'm abiding by His past. And when that trouble comes, everything is all right. All right. Two different words. Not that one that's pushed together means it's okay. But two different words. All right. Because I thought if I try to abide in Him, He's, He'll abide in us. And He'll work for us when we can't work for ourselves. I thought that's all I have. I hope that helps somebody. I know, uh, I know I'm know. i just flesh and I struggle. But I thought I'd like to, I'd, I'm going to turn back over to the pastor. I thought I'd like to do the Lord's will. Because that's, that's the most important thing in this life. <laughs> the most important thing in my life. Cut it down. And, and, 
And the Bible said that the dresser of the vineyard prayed to the Lord of the vineyard and said, Let it, let it give me one more year uh, to know about it, work with it, fertilize it, what he's saying, work with it, and maybe uh, it'll bear. But if it don't bear this year, then cut it down. He said, Why cumber it the ground? That's what he wanted to know. But what got on her heart, uh, uh, the Bible said that three years that they passed by and that tree had to bear no fruit. Uh, and and I, I got to want to know how long it took for a tree, a fig tree, to bear fruit. And it's three to five years for a fig tree to be able to even bear its first fruit. So I know when I read the scripture that God was a uh, talking to a tree that had just been planted. It wasn't a young tree, it was an old tree. That's what the preacher's preaching to us tonight, that it's some of us that has said a little too long. We've just got into a state in our own mind that we're not bearing the good fruit no more. There's fruit for us to bear, but Jerry, and I, I, I find this question a lot. Uh, seem like more and more as we grow and oh, get older in Christ, I have people come and they say, can you help me pray? So and so is in trouble. Last few weeks, it just seemed like it's poured in. Kenny, uh, they're not saved. Uh, they're not praying. Yeah. Yeah. Here they are. They're facing death. Uh, they're on life support. They, uh, their, their heart is quit. Cancer has come. And they're not where they need to be. Kenny, will you pray that God will show mercy? I'm wondering how many times did we get our last year on, that we got. Right. Yeah. I wonder tonight if the Lord has come by again telling us you got one more year now. I've told you over and over. Sometimes Jerry would like to be so plain. I had one tell me the other night. He said, we got one that's a dying. Either we need God to show mercy. I said, yes, we do. I said, but what about you? What about where you're living? What yeah. about it was you that had the stroke? And they put you in on the life support tonight. How is your life? You're begging God to show mercy. But you're not ready yourself. God has fire to cut you down. How am I? Pull him in. Call him in. What if you just got one more year, church? What if that one, sometimes these that are closest to me, Jerry, I, I, I worry that I'm too hard. I worry that I, I don't have the fruit of gentleness. I, I'm afraid many times. I've had a great battle. Uh, it may not, you all may not feel it, and I hope God never lets you see it. But sometimes when we go home at night, I wonder, was I gentle enough to them? Was I soft enough? Did I care enough? But next week when they come and they're laying down there and they're about to meet God, I so. not ready. Yeah. I wonder then, did I do enough? Yeah. Yeah. Did I say enough? Yeah. Did I stress it loud enough that when you meet uh -huh. this man, and you're not ready to meet him. He's not going to stutter when he looks at me. No. When my record appears, Jerry, on that day, he's not going to stutter. It's going to speak for itself. Yeah. My good's going to outweigh my bad, or my bad's going to outweigh my good. Yeah. I got one year left, and he's going to cut me down. How will it be with your church if you have one year left? One year. Can you play it? I remember in the scripture when Jeremiah prophesied to him and I, he prophesied lies and rebellion to the people. He said, before the year is over, you're going to die. Before the year is over. You know what? That man died just like God spoke to him. Because he taught rebellion among yeah. the people. He gave them a way out to sin and it'd be alright. They ain't no excuse for sin. I appreciate it. Now, I just feel like saying this. Brandon, I just want to say, I believe in showing mercy. I believe in, in, in working with the truth. Trying your very best to give them every opportunity to do it right. We got people that's sitting here tonight that God, if, if it hadn't been for Jesus Christ and His sacrifice, God would have already cut you down and done away with you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. The only thing that saves us when we get into them positions is the Son of God. Yeah. His sacrifice. He looks yeah. down. I can yeah. imagine him saying, Lord, give me just a little more time. I know he runs foolish sometimes. I know he does something. But give me one more year to get him yeah. where you want. Give me one. I believe in working with the church if we ain't careful. We pedal each other too much. Yeah. Yeah. We wind up. Now my friends is laying down there. Yeah. I went down today to a funeral one of them. Laid 18 days. Uh, no, no food, no water. 
They took the life support out of him. So you see down there, they took, they let that man lay there and die. Starved him to death, laying there. The hospital done that, Brother Derek. And I said, if you do a job that way, they'll put you in prison. Yeah. But 18 yeah. days, that man stopped so, laying there. God is a just God. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But it's too late when they get down to our church. It's too late when you pet your family one last time. It's all right to lie. No. It's all right to run down to the no. uh, concerts. It's no. all right to get on them phones and look at the things you're looking at. But no. it ain't all right. No. It ain't all right with God. No. No. It could be all right with you, but it ain't all right with God. Come on. Come on. Let's down the bad just a little bit. It's going to take the Spirit of God to help our people. You ain't going to be able to put a little flesh on somebody that's already a dying. No. I mean, we got men that will even take care of their family. And we tell them it's all right, but the Bible said you're worse than an infidel. It ain't all right today. Come on. 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 I just want to just, what are we going to do? Are we going to pay our people? Right until the devil steals every last one of them from them. I'll right. tell you what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for our people. Right. I don't want to turn those off. from it. It hurts me bad. Yeah. I've done the Lord. I don't know uh, what it would be for my friend laid down there. I know what the devil done to him before he left. It'll still be the same no matter what. Yeah. Maybe you pray. I told a man the other day, he come to my house. I said, buddy, I said, you pray all you want. But if God don't win, deal with you, you can't be saved. You can go down to the hospital and die for six months. But if the Spirit of God does not deal with you, you can't be saved. That's just the Spirit. That's the Bible. Hallelujah. I'd love to encourage our people. We may just have a year later. Sandy, will we keep on till He cuts us down? Will we keep on fighting? We want another until he cuts us down. He said, You bite and devour one another. Take heed, lest you be consumed. It might be all right with you, but it ain't all right with God. What if? And I, I hope. What if you just got one more year? One more year. Yeah. My little girl's a year old, buddy. But Jerry hits Ben so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Through all the struggles and the troubles, that year is passed so your life is even as a baby. It appears you don't know when checkout is, but I promise you it's a come. It's appointed to every one of us to die, and after that we're going to the judgment. I wonder today, Jerry, if my life today will get me through the judgment. <laughs> if it don't, I better work on it. I better try to figure out how to get rid of some of that flesh and get some of that fruit. I need some of that fruit. I need it. I appreciate the Lord. Yes.
Whip it to hit me. Yeah. Come on. There it is. Yeah. I'm going to hit me the time, Tony. Come on, boy. We need the power of God. Yeah. We got too many Bible readers. Get up in the house of God. It's dead. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
what your reward is. Man. You've got to do a reward, not me. Yeah. You might say, Jerry, I don't like that preaching. I wish you just said that. No, I can't say that. No, preacher. You don't want me to preach. Yeah. Come on, just stay still, children. Isn't it getting hard on me? Come on. Isn't it getting hard on you, girls? Isn't it getting hard on you? What about you, girls? Isn't it getting hard on you? Who are you going to look to, Jerry? No. I'm just happy, so. Just happy, brown. I like it. Yeah. Right in the cloud. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Lord, oh. I'm hungry for the power. Yeah.
And he just made somebody get it. But it's a whole house to it. And I didn't go back to get a hold of something. <laughs> but I finally did get a hold of it. I sure did. I finally did get a hold of it. We'll look at what people have done. Look at They get them up, you know, and they hold them up here. And
They come in and tell us all the people how to do it. We then where you may be. And you think you where you are to be and you ain't. You ain't strong. You strong enough to have to come down to hit them with my word. How many loves me tonight? How many loves me tonight? How many loves I think this is the month when you brag on your pastor. They tell me this is the time they brag on the pastor. Well, you can't brag on me the other month. Just don't brag on me this month. Come on, and you tell me the truth. Come on, Gary. Hallelujah. Lord, when I was called to preach, I said in my mind, Betty Allen said, Jerry, are you going to take this church? I said, as quick as let me know. But you know what I was doing? All I was in the house doesn't have it lying down. Like a, a lot of other young people in the hall. Come on. She just come to me. I hope it don't kill me. The music was too loud. Alright. Now you go with I ain't mad. Keep me down. If it tires it up, I'm still gonna preach. You know, like, if I will, it just doesn't do me no favor. I can't hear it doesn't it hurt my head. Anybody else it hurt your head? Come on. I, I'm the pastor, I gotta tell you. We ain't out there.
And the bitch tired of it. Man, man, you poor. Just get in the altar when I get through. Get in the altar and say, He's right. How many ever thought you'd right when you were wrong? And you know every a young person, you just been hard to tell them. And I used to be. I was like, and I understand it. But how would you like to tell people? You think I'm going to leave you all wrong? And I tell you what we need, we need some money.
come upon you. There are too many going to the creek bank, going down. Come up wet. Ain't even got a shoe. How many like to stand still? I know it, this is really tough to the law. But I'm not up here with tough to the law. you know what I feel like tonight? There's some people need to just stand still. The enemy is raised. I don't know what is going on, but God knows what is going on. All right, in the 14th chapter of the <coughs> Somebody started the, the show. I ain't going to read it all. I know you might say he, you should have done it. But I ain't going to. Somebody started the 12th of the first. Did he do that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lee, he was is not this the word that we did tell the Egyptians, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? What did he say? Yeah, just let us alone. That's why people around here believe us wrong. Yeah. Don't tell us what you tell us. We wait on another preacher to come here and tell us something sweet. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Don't, don't tell us. I got a new for you,
That means we must just stand still. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some things I've been asking the Lord for a long time. And He didn't have. But I'm still shopping. I ain't shopping, Frank. I'm still asking.
I'm going to say it. I'm going to wait to get good by. I'm going to try not to say it. If somebody did something wanted to be young, what he has to do. You know what? If, if they come to the Jason and David, and uh, I had them here, well, this way the Lord is about me and you. And I got about here, a man come up and said, I'm going to slap David's face. I said, David, you get right behind me, you're Jason, stay right here. I said, buddy, if you do it, just slap me. <laughs> slap the whole thing. Because I'm shelled with my two boys. That's what the Lord was doing by me and you. <laughs> the Lord gives his own out of all right, uh, let go to the third person. 30. 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Ain't that good? Yeah. Ain't that good? I think we got one more place to go. How many in here is taller? Oh, come on, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Come on, this time. Oh, 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 oh. 